Hey everybody. Um, we are going to be doing some balance challenge exercises today. So all you need to have is a chair. You can switch some of our things that I'll be having you guys do from standing to chair if you'd rather for modification. So that's really up to you. Otherwise, we're going to kind of push a little bit compared to the last video I did with you guys where we were doing everything seated. So today will be some extra things standing, but again, you can modify with the chair. So keep the chair handy if you want to have the chair. Um, and it's really going to be up to you if you feel like you need to kind of scale back a little bit and sit and do the exercises, you can. If you are able to be pushing a little bit more today and you can do more of these things standing up, then go ahead and stay in the standing position as we go through these things. But really, it's going to be kind of up to you where you're at today and what you feel like you're able to get done. So chair is here for some modifications if needed. I also have it here so that as I'm doing certain movements, if I need some extra assistance or stability, I have it here with me. So I will leave it up to you, but if you wanna go get a chair really quick, you have time, go grab a chair and just make sure as always that it's not on wheels so that it's nice and actually sturdy for us, okay? Otherwise, you wanna make sure you've got your shoes on today, helping us with our balancing stuff. And we'll just kind of go through it. So some of the movements that we did last time, again, in the seated balancing video that we did, you're going to recognize some of those movements, but we're advancing it by having you try standing. Some of the things we haven't done, and it's actually more specific to balancing and what we think of as balancing exercises. So we'll be working the muscle groups that help us balance and then challenging our balance with a couple of the movements as well. So we're going to go ahead and get you guys started, but thank you for coming and accepting this little balance challenge that we have for today's little pop-up video. All right, the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is basic marching. And as you go ahead and start, remember I don't count, we don't count here, we're going to go ahead and start basic marching. And as I'm lifting up and down and not counting, I am making sure that my feet, my toes stay a little flexed up so that I have some muscle memory for better stepping. And that when I am walking, I'm not shuffling with a flat foot, right? And then we stumble and we fall. So flex those toes up and remind that ankle that needs to move with us as we walk. It is up to you how high up you march. As you keep going, I'll show you sideways. You don't need to march insanely high because I don't want you to hurt your back, all right? We don't climb stairs that steep anyway. So think about going over a curb, think about going up your stairs, and we're just doing basic marching. As I switch sides, I do stay tall in my core. I can balance that book in my head the whole time if I need to. All right, engage the core for balance. We've got a little one-legged balancing going on. Chair if you need it. If not, hands off, okay? You decide. Go ahead and take a break. Good. Next exercise we're going to go ahead and do is basic sidestepping. I'm going to start in the center of the camera here so you can see me. And you're just going to sidestep over, feet together, sidestep over, feet together. Continue doing your side step. I'm lifting my foot each direction, so I lift and lift. Don't slide into the carpet because that's not how you would side step out of the way if somebody was texting and walking towards you, right? So you need to step out of the way of the person coming at you. You decide how wide you want these steps to be right now. Small is just fine, but I'm working my hips. I'm working my core, I've got good balance. You're getting your body used to moving in different planes, and that's a good thing, too, for reaction time. And if this is too much for you, you just go back down to your chair, and you can do your basic side step and over, but seated, okay? We did those the last video as well for the chair balance. Let's go ahead and do one more time over and take a break. Good. Nice and easy so far, right? A little more challenging than the chair, but still very doable. The next one I'm going to have you guys do is an actual balance challenge. I call this one the plank, or some of my clients also know it as the balance beam. So what I'm gonna have you guys do, you don't have to go heel toe, but you can stand a little off, right? It's a little bit wider, that's more of a plank. I think of a plank, the pirate's plank, because we've all walked on one, right? Um, is being a little bit wider. So I can have my feet a little bit wider as I do this. I think of that balance beam that those amazing athletes go on too for the Olympics and the gymnastics and stuff, a lot more narrow. So you decide how wide you want your feet to be and you decide which is best for you, okay? So find that position and you're just gonna hold this. You may need to hang on for balance. You may feel yourself swaying. But while I hold this, both knees are a little soft. 
My ribs are engaged, so kind of squeeze that rib cage a little bit and hold here. And that's it, you're just holding the exercise. Sounds easier, um, but when you go to do it, you might find yourself wobbling a lot more. If it's too much, widen those feet a little, okay? But this is just getting us to get the hips and the core and the ankles able to hold us steady and activated, okay? Now, we all know that we are right-handed or left-handed individuals, which means we usually have a dominant side, which means I have to make you put the other leg in front next. So take a step back, shake it out a little bit, and you do the same movement, opposite leg in front. So swing that leg in front, decide how wide you're gonna be. I'll show you this way. All right, so kind of find the position that's gonna work for you. Hold on to the wall or the chair if you need to. And kind of squeeze your tush, squeeze your abs, and if you can, think eyes up. All right, so we're walking, we're balancing. It's this kind of movement, all right? Um, we do this if somebody's walking towards us and we have to kind of step over out of the way. Now we're comfortable and we're stronger in here. If you want to really push yourself, you can go ahead and connect the heel and toe. And you've kind of shortened up your surface area that you have to balance on and it makes it more challenging. But do where your comfort level is. If we do fall off the plank, all we're doing is stepping out to the side. So no points marked off with the, uh, with the score from the gymnastics judges. Holding nice and steady here. Good, all right, we're gonna go ahead and take a break. The next one I'm gonna have you guys get into is what I call the rocking horse. I used to teach water aerobics back at NIU. And this is a movement that we did there. So if you've taken our water classes before, you may recognize the name or the movement. Um, if not, bear with me. What I'm gonna have you guys do is go back to your dominant leg being in front and then kind of picture a rocking horse. And I'm gonna have you march up with the front leg, step down, kick your butt in the back, not really, and then step down, all right? So it's a march and a kick. And you're gonna keep going back and forth. Now, again, if you need to shorten this movement, you can shorten this movement to here and I'm holding on as well. Otherwise you can lift and you can kick. And I've got a wider stance with my feet coming up and down, okay? What I am not doing is curving my spine through this. I'm staying nice and tight in this rib cage area and challenging myself. And I'm also flexing my toes up as I march. All right, back and forth. Now, if you think about it, this is kind of like a running motion as well. Those of you that know me know I'm not a runner. However, I can help break down the movements and make you stronger for it. Go ahead and take a little break and we're going to switch sides okay other leg in front same movement opposite leg is my lead now i'm going to march and i'm going to curl i'm going to march and i'm going to curl good now keep doing it remember i'm not counting so you better not be you're going to go crazy during this little session and we're going to keep moving i'll kind of show you different angles you stay in one place i'm just showing you different angles so you can see what's happening i'm marching and curling i'm marching and curling. Again, you've got the wall, you've got the chair. I'm targeting all of these muscle groups that are gonna help us with our standing, sitting, getting up and down, getting up and on the stairs. It's all good stuff for us, okay? One more time, marching up and curling. Good, take a break, kind of shake it out a little bit. You guys are doing good so far. It's a little different from the chair one we did last time, so take a break if you need to. Otherwise, we're gonna keep rolling here. The next exercise I want to have you guys do is a one-legged balance. Hold on if you need it. Pick a leg that's going to be your st stabilizing leg and pick up the other one. When I pick up this leg, you can keep the toe down if you need it. You can lift it up. Up to you. As you're holding, this is fine. If you don't need it, that's fine too. You can kind of hover and just kind of stay here. What I am not doing is popping my hip out. I'm calling that a lazy hip. Don't be lazy. Engage that hip, squeeze that tush, and that way you're tall and I'm really gonna have a nice strong hip, which is good for balance, right? We gotta engage in here so that we're not wobbly when we walk. Go ahead and let go, and we're gonna switch sides. Squeeze, don't be lazy on that hip, and lift. Okay, and you're just gonna hold this balancing position. Holding on if you need to, hover if you wanna challenge a little. Also notice my stabilizing leg I am not locking out my knee. It's always gonna be a little bit soft, okay? A lot of my clients always hear, don't lock out your joints. This is definitely a good example to think about that. I am engaged, but I am not locked out down there. Stay nice and tall for me. 
and then take a break. Shake it out. We're gonna go back and do it again, all right? This time I'm gonna let you move the leg that's not being stabilized, okay? I'm gonna engage and stabilize. This time you can bring that leg out in front if you wanna challenge yourself. You can kind of curl and it just changes, or you can move it around how you balance, but I'm solid in my hip because I'm squeezing that touch, right? So it's okay to kind of play with that a little bit. Lower down, switch sides. Engage the hip, don't be lazy, and then decide what you're gonna do with the non-stabilizing leg. Nothing wrong with really challenging yourself. You can still hold on and feel like that's what it would be like. You can hover and just stay here with it, okay? It's always good to challenge, take a break. That's an exercise you can do standing at the kitchen sink, or if you're waiting for something to finish up in the microwave or boiling water or making tea or something, you can just stand there and kind of time yourself with that timer. Another good spot is brushing our teeth, right? So I'm on one side, I can be balancing, I switch side of my mouth and I switch my leg. Always good, sneak little things like that in throughout your day, okay? But make your hips stabilize you. The next one I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and do is a calf raise. I'll show you sideways. All we're doing is just lifting the heels up, back down. So go ahead and start. If you're seated right now, you still just do the heel up and down while you're seated, okay? Nothing wrong with that. We're still waking at work. I am being very deliberate about my movement. I go weight on my heels and I slowly go to all of my toes and then lower it controlled back down. We talked last time I did the balance video about how important it is to have a strong ankle and feet because that's what gives us that feedback up to our brain and tells us where we need to stabilize for balance, okay? We don't wanna have those tight locked joints and then we aren't able to adjust to different terrain when we're walking. And we're doing a lot of walking these days outside, hopefully, since we're kind of stuck in our houses at the moment. So let's do it the right way, right? Let's go ahead and do two more. Easy up one. Again, my knees are not locked out. Easy up and two. Take a break. Now we're gonna do the toe lift. A lot of times you hear people stumbling and losing their balance because they stumble on their toes because we shuffle, right? So we don't wanna do the shuffling, we're gonna lift those toes up. Kinda of hard to do this one standing, it's doable, and you can just pick your toes up and lower, right? So I'm just picking up and lower. It's a little easier though, physics, to have one foot out in front, and you can just tap to the music, okay? Got a fun little music going at your house in the background, and you're just gonna tap a few. Really, you should just be feeling this up in that shin. Okay, we'll do a couple more and three and two and switch. Same thing, opposite foot, foot out in front, basic toe taps. I hope you're not counting. <laughs> nice and easy, feeling it up the front of the shin and that way we have a flexible ankle joint to be our friend when we're out walking. And three and two and relax, good. All right, you guys. <laughs> you get to see me try to do what's called the waltz. And I put my little air quotes there because it's not exactly the waltz. We're staying in one little spot. But you're just going to kind of do a little box step, okay? So what I'm going to have you guys do for me right now, and I'm holding on to show you the modification. I'm going to step to my side, feet together. My outside leg is my moving leg. I'm going to step back, feet together. Outside leg, step out, together. Outside leg, front together. Same thing again, same direction. Outside leg step, outside leg back, together, outside leg step, together, outside leg step. Good, keeping it going. Side step, back step, side step, front step. Again, side step. Now why do we do this? We do it just to challenge our brain a little bit with movement. It's good to move in different planes and it's really good to challenge your body this way, okay? This is gonna be our last one this direction. Maybe you've got music at home, maybe you don't. But you're gonna pause right here and we're gonna do the same thing, but now backwards. Side step back, to the side, to the front, to the side, okay? And back, and side, to the front, and to the side. Keep it going. If you goof up on the feet and the wrong leg is stepping at the wrong time, we're just making a box. Gym teacher is not gonna get mad at us, I promise. When you're out there and you have to move, 
you're not going to sit there and think about the waltz count and what leg is supposed to be stepping, okay? We're just making our side step movement. This will be our last one when we get up to the front, and then we're going to take a break. Good. It's as close to dancing as you're going to get from me for a long time, guys. All right, next we're going to do some basic side leg lifts. I like this one because it really does challenge the hip area. We're going to do a straight leg version, and then we're also going to do a bent leg version, okay? Holding on if you need it for your balance. Now on this one, I'm a little picky. I want to make sure you're using the right muscle group, okay? My clients hear this a lot from me. I want you to turn your toe, my working leg. I'm going to turn it a little bit in, okay? That's going to help me engage the right muscle group. I also don't want to have a lazy hip on my stabilizing side. So the leg that's going to hold me up, I'm going to squeeze that cheek. Moving leg, I turn my toe in a little bit, and I'm going to lift out to the side. This is not a big movement, right? It's tiny, but if I do it right, it doesn't need to be a very big movement. But you should feel it right in that glute medius. All right, if I let my toe roll out, now my thighs have taken over in the movement, and that's not what I'm targeting. It's not a bad muscle group, but it's not the one I'm targeting. So my toes turning in really makes me draw in over there a little bit more, okay? Let's do three more. One, two, and three. Now we're going right into the bent knee. So bend that knee. Go out to your side. Again, not a big movement. A little string is attached to my knees. I'm not coming in front. It's a string attached to my knees, and I'm just going out to the side, back in. Staying tall. Ribs are still tight. I know you really should be feeling it probably on both hips, right? Because we're not being lazy over on the stabilizing side, and we're working this one. So it's targeting both sides for us. Last one, and take a break. Shake it out a little bit, because I might be a little chatty. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite lead. Switch sides of the chair if you need to. I've got my straight leg, toes turned in, stabilizing side, squeeze the cheeks, and lift. I'm staying tall. I'm not looking for a giant movement. If I go too big, I'm going to hurt my low back. And I'm just challenging myself. If you don't need to hang on, you can hover. If you're really able to push yourself, don't do it. If you're not comfortable, you can just stay with both hands off. Okay, let's do three and two and good. Go into your bent leg. Again, we're swinging from the knees together, so I don't want to open up my hip at all. Keep that thigh straight ahead and keep our stabilizing hip engaged, okay? Holding on if you need it. Easy in and out. Easy in and easy out. Good. Balance that book. Eyes staying up. And three and two and take a break. Excellent. Similar movement, but we're going to target the back muscles now, um, as in your glute max and your hamstring. So I'm going to show you sideways, holding on for my balance. I want to make sure on this one, if my low back is a little snarky, you can go ahead and balance a little more on the chair if you need it versus just the hands, okay? But I'm still engaged. I still have a straight back. I'm not rounding and being lazy. The exercise we're going to do, you can step back with the working leg, engage that stabilizing hip, and I'm just going to lift. It's a gentle lift, okay? If that's too much for your low back, you can go to kind of sliding, and I'm just gently picking the foot up almost all the way off the floor so I don't stick to the carpet, and sliding, okay? Really what's making this happen is that glute, a little bit in the hamstring, with the straight leg, it's a lot of glute though, but I don't want you feeling this in your low back. Let's do two more, staying tall with that stabilizing side. Now, go to your bent knee and kick back. Tiny, tiny movement. The more I bend this knee, the more my hamstring is going to talk to me, okay? And we know that when we really bend that knee and squeeze, that hamstring might want to tell you, I'm going to have Charlie horse, but it's just the way that that muscle feels when we engage it and isolate that way. Bear with me. If it's too much, lower that foot a little bit so you're not so bent at your knee. Otherwise, push it. Work that hamstring. We want those strong muscles back there for when we're sitting and standing. One more. Good. Take a break. Shake it out. Same thing opposite side. I'll show you this way so you can see better. Holding on for balance if you need it. I've got the moving leg ready. Stabilizing side. Squeeze that hip. Holding on. Nice and tall. Lift. This is the tiny movement version. And then again, if you're looking to have it be a little bit less on your back, sliding 
a little bit of a donkey kick sensation, but you're not quite locked into that bent knee. It's almost combining the two movements. All right, so I'm still squeezing. I'm still making sure that I work the glutes on this side. My stabilizing hip is engaged. I'm not being lazy back there. Otherwise, we're in that nice straight one. Keeping my ribs tight. Let's do three more. One, two, and three. Good. Bend the knee now. Same movement, that donkey kick. Straight back and in. Back and in. Good. Keep going. If you're seated, you can just be going to the marching. You can be dragging your heel across the floor to the bent position. So it would be a straight leg. Drag the heel in. Still going to target a very similar fashion, that muscle group, okay? Let's go ahead and do three more. One and two and three. Good. Shake it up. Very good. You guys should have some tired hips right now, okay? Let's do our calf stretch. Holding on. The calf I'm stretching is in the back, and I'm going to kind of lunge into my chair, and I'm going to dig my back heel down. So I've got a good calf stretch back there, okay? If I need a bigger one, I step more forward and lunge. I'm nice and tall on my back. Really trying to drive that heel down as much as I can. And then keeping the same setup, I'm just going to bend that back straight leg a little bit, stretching my other calf muscle. Remember, we have two calf muscles. So you can stretch one with the straight leg, hit the other one with that bent knee, okay? Holding a nice good stretch. And then step out, roll it out. Good. All right, we're going to do the same thing opposite lead, okay? Holding onto the chair, stretching calf in the back, stepping forward, lunge, and then really dig that heel down in the back, okay? Staying nice and tall and engaged. If you don't feel the stretch, make your stride longer and really push into it. You guys did really good today. It was a bigger challenge having to do a lot of this standing up. Your hips may be a little sore. And that's good stuff. It just means those are areas we need to work on, right? Bend that back knee. My heel comes up a little bit when I bend the back knee, and it's supposed to, okay? I'm not looking to or stretch that Achilles tendon or anything in there, okay? So let it just release nice and easy. And I'm still staying nice and tall through here, making sure both calves get their stretch. And gently release. Same thing, you're going to kind of roll it out. Let that ankle loosen things back up again. Good. We're going to bring ourselves to a seated position at this point. So bring that chair out that you have. And we're going to do some extra stretches. If you don't have the chair, you can still stay standing. Just skip this particular ab exercise. And I'm going to have you guys kind of on the edge of the seat, arms across the chest, tall and engaged through my ribs. And I'm going to lean back and come back forward. I want you to keep going. You should not lean so far back that your feet come off the floor. So make sure you stay grounded with this exercise. But every time I hinge at my hip, I feel my core, my ribs get nice and tight. And that means all that abdominal area is flexing for me, okay? Let's do five more. If you want to push a little bit more, you hang on to a weight on your chest or a medicine ball, some cans of soup, whatever we have handy. And you just challenge yourself a little bit more. Let's make this one our last one and take a break. Good. Now we're going to do our hamstring stretch. So I'm going to have you put your straight leg out and just gently slide down and stretch. All in the back of the straight leg is that hamstring, a little bit in that calf, and we're just stretching, okay? My chin is in a neutral position. I am not looking up to the ceiling. I'm staying neutral and holding. I also make sure that my foot stays straight the whole time. I'm not turning in and making one hamstring high that needs the biggest stretch. Neutral straight foot, hitting all three hamstrings back there. And then easy up, and let's switch. Leg out, my foot is straight. I slide down, staying in a nice neutral position in that neck. Good, you guys. I'm just holding a nice, easy stretch for me, okay? If you're standing, you can just be kind of reaching down for the toes. You can put your tush up against the wall for a little extra balance and then lean forward. You just want to make sure your legs are not super glued to the wall when you do that. You can kind of have your feet out in front of you. And then easy back up. Good. We're going to do some ankle work next. I'm going to have you put one leg out in front. You kind of need to be seated for this, but standing could work. 
What I'm going to have you do is watch my foot, and you're going to see that I'm going to take it from this position with my hand. I'm going to pivot at my heel, turn back neutral. They're going to pivot the other way, turn back neutral. So I'm just going to continue to pivot. What I'm not doing is rolling my foot, so I'm not rocking side to side. It is just a pivot on my heel, turn center, and a pivot and a turn center. One side's going to have a lot more movement than the other. That's natural. We oftentimes only roll our ankle on one side, right? So when we pivot that way, there's a lot more movement. But if we could roll our ankles equally on both sides, we would not be very stable. All right, so don't be surprised by it. It's not something that's going to be even on both sides as far as the one ankle goes. And we're going to switch. Leg out in front, nice and straight. Pivot, neutral, pivot, neutral. And as you keep pivoting, look at your thigh, making sure it's not moving. I've got a nice, straight, steady thigh. And all that's happening is that pivot on my heel. This is a really good one to help strengthen our ankles. All right, let's do one more. And good, take a break. Excellent, you guys. You guys did a really good job. We're going to do our last one. Let's do two more. Why not? Let's stretch out the chest really quick first. You can do this with a bent arm or straight. It's really up to you and your shoulders. Straight arm, you're just reaching back behind you as far as you can, but I'm keeping my hands down low, and that's gonna be targeting this pec and shoulder area. We sit at a computer all day long, or maybe we're watching more TV than normal, and we get very rounded shoulders. So reach back behind you as far as you can. Bring it back in. We're gonna do it again, okay? Now I'll show you the bent arm. Pushing back, elbows are leading, so my hands are a little forward on this, and I'm just reaching back with my elbows. All right, and then bring it back in. Good. That's a good one to do throughout your day as well. You can do that as you're walking through a doorway, holding on to the door, and kind of walk through the doorway, and then release the hands. And that helps open things up for us. The last one I'm going to have you guys do is have your feet wide. And we're going to do a forward fold, and that's going to help stretch out that low back area. Again, we're sitting more, and we compress our spine. So we want to try to lengthen it and give it a little bit of a breather. So I'm going to have you guys round your back forward. I am keeping my head above my heart. I'm not totally dropping my head right now. And I'm going to have you roll it back up, articulate up, and let's do that one more time, okay? Rounding my spine forward, stretching out my low back, and then easy articulate the spine all the way back up. Roll out those shoulders, and you guys are done today. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the little step up with that balance challenge today. Um, if it was too much, again, you can go back to the first video where I did more balancing seated. Um, or you can just do some modifications like we talked about where you can do some things seated in your chair versus everything always standing, okay? You guys did great. Thanks for coming. Um, Enjoy the weather while you can get out. The temperature is gorgeous, but I think rain is in the forecast, so enjoy it while we can. And thanks for joining us, you guys. Share and like. Talk to you later.